The property actually was originally the quarry site um, for Stony Creek Granite and the quarry out ceased operations in the 1910s, 1920s. So this land pretty much lay fallow from 1915 till we've gotten it. So it was overgrown with weeds, there were rocks, it was just uninhabitable. And we've spent the last three years iteratively um, making small changes, small innovations. The orchard actually used to be an overgrown early second growth forest that we decided to take down and uncovered one and a half acres of land that opened up panoramic views to the water from the street and was an excellent setting for the orchard. Given the, so the amount of space in the flat area um, and recognizing that any house, no matter how large, would only occupy a small footprint of that. We've really been challenged with what are we going to do with the rest of the space. Um, I initially thought that a soccer field would be fun, but Jonathan, who's not the sportsman, <laughs> thought that something else more symbolic. I was actually wondering, could people in 2004 actually build something like Stonehenge. Oh, I, I thought he was crazy. It's just the idea, you know, can you think about something and make it happen? You know, so a year ago when I uh, met Daryl, I was actually incredible that we could actually do it. Jonathan is known for his quote-unquote crazy ideas that turn into tremendously wonderful creations. But that's my job as his wife, yeah. is to be the one to say, yes, it's a crazy idea. <laughs> so part was challenge, part was inspiration. Uh, most of it was, you know, to build something to last, uh, something special for my children. We're working on a project here that's uh, an idea of uh, Dr. Jonathan Rothberg. And uh, it's, it's an idea that uh, he has to create a, uh, a calendar, a, a solar uh, calendar, so an instrument that, that will work.
and uh, the basis of the idea probably could be referred to as Stonehenge. And Dr. Rothberg came to me with this idea and uh, uh, described it to me and, and said, uh, how can we make this idea concrete and, and how can we make this idea reality? And so uh, I suggested to him that we do it in stone and I suggested that we work with the uh, best possible people in the world uh, at, at this time. Uh, whereas uh, in Stonehenge many uh, uh, thousands of years ago they created the, uh, the, the sculpture with the best possible technology at that time. The idea here is also to create this project with the, uh, the best possible uh, uh, technology available. Det var jo eh, først og fremst stø dimensjonene da, ja. på, på de store blokkene som er helt spesielle. Vi laver jo ikke så store blokker, så vi måtte planlegge det hele helt fra grunnen av i fjellet når vi tog ut de første grunnleggende flakene som vi kaller. Eh, det vi, vi måtte planlegge det helt fra bunnen da, fordi de var store størrelser. Så so, uh, what vi doing her is uh is uh, polishing the, uh, the blocks, the uprights, the, uh, the two meter by four meter uh, pieces, the elements. And it involves a lot of work and a lot of uh, very focused work. And so I, uh, I put together a team of uh, three people and they come from uh, different backgrounds, but the chemistry of this team together has been very special. I'm Tom Cleveland. I live in Branford, Connecticut, near where uh, Daryl lives, uh, in a town called Stony Creek. I've never been to Norway before, so um, it's this is a wonderful opportunity to just sit back and uh, you know, think about my life uh, as I gaze into the eternity of uh, this wonderful stone that we're working on. Kind of fiberglass thing, yes. <laughs> what? Yeah, there are four of us working. Uh, Daryl knew uh, myself. Uh, Martin Kuhn, who yeah, is a yeah. sculptor like Daryl, affiliated with this quarry. And uh, Jasmine uh, Hurst, who's a stonemason woman. Uh, 
10 years in the business and uh, now is going to uh, art school. For me, it's a, they're all, three of them are tremendously supportive and encouraging and it's, it's never that you're doing something wrong, it's always that, oh, it's, it looks great, that's perfect, that's great, just keep doing what you're doing. And you know that it's not quite as good as what they've been doing. And then maybe they'll come back and quickly smooth some of the edges, but oh, it's great. <laughs> spend a lot of time just sort of looking at the stone encased in earphones, glasses, masks, heavy clothing. So you're you're just alone in a mesmerizing time. And one day I, I realized that this is the first time this stone has ever seen the light of day. You know, that these molecules may never have seen the sun since you know, a billion years ago. It makes you realize that, that each moment is, is there's something extraordinary going on uh, you know, in your life. All you need to, to do is you know, sort of listen. So, and and then, uh, then there's always this Reikian sort of thinking that, uh, you know, that the stones in and of themselves have a sense, have a being, and that they are full of crystals which are picking up extraordinary, you know, picking up vibrations that are vibrating themselves. And that, you know, that we working upon uh, them change the stone in an imperceptible but fundamental, you know, wonderful way too. We decided that we would try to ship uh, the blocks uh, break bulk, which means that the blocks would be uh, open uh, rather than shipping them uh, individually in containers. And we needed to protect them. We needed to primarily protect the polished surface that we had spent so much time on. So I bought carpet, you know, indoor outdoor carpet, so they could take the water. And we laid it down over the surface, the polished surface. We strapped it down. And that took care of the polished surface. Uh, and then the corners. We were working all the way uh, along the process with three centimeter tolerance. So what may look like raw block in the transportation stage, in fact, wasn't. It needed to be maintained. The corners needed to be protected. So we laid big, uh, rigid plastic uh, angles along all of the, uh, the edges. The Norwegian port, uh, Thomas Hogue, worked closely with me to come up with a system uh, that we could ship the block all the way to the site because you have the port, you have the ship, you have the port in New Haven, you have the truck, and then you have the crane. And that's a lot of different handling.
my joking with Jonathan um, about the circle of life, um, when the stones started arriving and they started being placed in the upright position in the circle, um, it was definitely a very inspiring, a definitely awesome and almost intimidating experience to be able to walk up to this growing army of monoliths and to be able to walk up and touch the face. Um, it was almost as if we were being invaded from outer space with these large stones. Because they couldn't have any lifting points on them, the stones had to be choked. They came in in a, a horizontal position and had to be stood vertical. And in order to do that without the sling scarring the stone or anything, we had to make up a special spreader beam to uh, span the width of the stone so that the, the slings wouldn't actually make contact and damage the stone at all. We made the corners out of hardwood oak and uh, to keep the slings from cutting through the through the wood with that much tension on them uh, they just just make toothpicks out of uh, out of the wood in no time uh, we we carved up a couple of trees in this project to uh, to get these stood upright Well, for people who live today, of course, we don't need to go out and look at the stars. We have air-conditioned houses and heated houses. Uh, we have watches and clocks that tell us uh, what to do. We don't often take the opportunity to go out into the open air and look up at the night sky. But when we do, we'll see what the people of ancient Stonehenge saw, and that is a pristine kind of celestial perfection. Uh, it's so perfect, in fact, that you could set your watch to it. And that's where your watch comes from. The hour hand on your watch is nothing more than uh, an imaginary line that follows the movement of the sun. All of the people who have worked here have been exposed to an idea that has been different perhaps than the regular uh, ideas and process of their everyday uh, uh, work. This has been such a specific project. They were all passionately involved in the project, from the workers all the way up to the owners. That, that rarely happens. I felt it all the way through. I, I thought it was quite fascinating to reproduce something that it, uh, I'd only read about in books. All he had to do was mention the name and I knew just what he was talking about and it was something I was looking forward to seeing uh, uh, this job come to fruition and we actually get a chance to to put it up. I think the circle is really uh, such a strong uh, universal symbol and that's the beginning of the form. Also um, the idea of, of a work of art being influenced by the sun and, and by the uh, uh, lunar eclipse, other celestial events, I mean that aspect of a piece uh, of, of a sculpture uh, has a timeless quality. So when I talked to Daryl and he talked to the engineers, the first thing I said is it has to last 10,000 years. 
the guarantee. Um, I don't know. Uh, we, we do the best we can, but we're not in the guarantee business. <laughs> if after 10,000 years something hasn't worked out exactly as planned, then um, I don't know how we'll approach that, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. We've probably worked on homes that were built in the 1880s. That's probably the oldest that we've ever had to deal with. The engineers did studies, earthquake studies. They simulated cars and trucks and trains running into it, uh, hurricanes and tornadoes. Concrete was designed to last that long, and we're going to make sure that it does. Even though we can't check on it, we'll guarantee it for 10,000 years, though. Yeah, they can't guarantee it. They are no problem. They guarantee it. Because Larvikstein has tested it and og uh, så det er jeg ikke noget for. I think the circle will function long after we're all gone. I think the sun, the moon, uh, will all keep their uh, celestial appointments through the openings in those stones. I believe nothing is going to happen on these things. Nobody's going to touch them for a long time. They're not going to go nowhere. Let's put it that way. Since the view to the north from this site is spectacular, you have this wonderful view over the inlet to the uh, low hills beyond, I thought it might be interesting uh, to have the seven stars of the Big Dipper, which is perpetually visible in the northern sky, forever circling the pole star as we see it from our hemisphere, uh, 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 given positions on the ground and marked as stones, one through seven in the shape of the Big Dipper on the ground, so that you could use these points to site uh, the uh, alignments. Well, once the grass comes up two inches, you see the... the... <laughs> it's all washing out from Noah. I couldn't wait to see the stone. The first day they, they came here, I want to take the carpet off, but I had to wait to, like everybody else. Because if it was up to me, I would have taken it out the first day. I would have clipped the straps and take it out. Every polished surface, every block of the uprights has a distinctive quality. So there's, a, there's almost an animation, a character to every block, an individual uh, within each block. I was talking to my daughter, Jordana, and I asked her what we should call this, and she immediately said, Circle of Life. So it's Jordana that, that named it. But I, but I thought that was appropriate. And it, it's actually believed that uh, life actually came from early molecules settling on the face of crystals. And these crystals gave these early molecules what we call handedness. And it was this handedness that allowed them uh, to organize and to replicate so uh, I think it goes full circle. Life may have formed on the uh, surface of these uh, crystals a billion years ago. And as you know, when you were talking to people, the last time these crystals were exposed was about a billion years ago when life formed. Uh, 
when the piece looks back at you and uh, it has as much, uh, uh, let's say, life but also presence as you, that's the quality in which you, you, you know that you know, you're out of it. It's, it's, a, it's a good feeling. And uh, this piece, of course, uh, you know, it's much greater than all of us. So in, in that way, uh, I'm, I'm finished with my work. I figured it would be beautiful if it was functional and if it meant something. Uh, it is bigger than I ever imagined. Before it was here, I would go up to these lines that Mike Panico, who's an amazing guy, glad we found him, would put on top of the foundation. And I would look at it and say, okay, two meters by one meter by four. I said, I think it's too small. And then when the stones came, boom, they're bigger than their dimensions. In, 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 in fact, you know, this is more beautiful than I ever imagined. Right now the sun is coming down over them. And you can see that this thing is designed for the sun. You can see it's past my, my son's birthday because it doesn't align anymore. Uh, but no, never, never had any fear it wouldn't be beautiful. Thank you.